I mean, you look like you're in the Game of Thrones prequel right now that you're getting ready for. How long is the beard and the hair going to stay? The beard's always going to be there. I mean, I'm trying. It's not as, I, I don't have as, I can't do it like no, you. You look, you look phenomenal. Hey everybody, what's up? Trey Wingo here. Emergency little mini Half Forgotten History episode. One of our favorite players of all time, Ryan Fitzpatrick, has called it a career and what a career he had. Uh, he's always been one of my favorite guys to watch, favorite guys to cover, favorite guys to talk to. And he graciously decided to give us a little bit of his time to talk about his career and the things that he remembers most and the things that drive him crazy. So please enjoy just a little snippet, a little more, one last shot of Fitz magic coming your way in this bonus episode. All right, did you ever think this day would come? I mean, 17 seasons, nine teams, NFL record starting for nine teams, throwing a touchdown pass for eight teams. Like, how long have you been thinking about this? Uh, so I have been, in my mind, I have been retired for at least a month. Um, I just didn't put it out there. I don't have social media or you know, didn't have a particular team that I could just call a press conference. I mean, some of my best yeah. buddies, Nick Mangold called a press conference because he did it with the Jets. Eric Wood did it with the Bills. I didn't feel like doing a nine-team Zoom to make sure <laughs> that we covered all of our bases. So uh, I've, I've been at peace with this one for, for a little while, but even the, the circumstance of yesterday, you know, I made that word cloud uh, with my son and we kind of positioned names and made people bigger and smaller. And I just sent it to a bunch of guys. And then Fred Jackson puts it out in the universe, which he, his name was the biggest on that word cloud, which meant that he's my favorite teammate of all time. So I guess what better way to do it, but he did send me an apology text this morning and said, dude, sorry, I didn't know it would blow up like that. And I was like, oh, it's it's all good, man. Probably probably the best thing that could have happened was for it to come out from you. So, Well, I always love that that somehow I think it's great that he was your favorite teammate because I always love the co-college to Harvard connection because I think the 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 idea of you throwing a pass to Fred Jackson is the only time that co-college and Harvard are ever going to be in the same sentence. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And I, I mean, I don't know if you've heard you've heard that story or not, though, that like the co-college thing is Marv Levy. Yeah. And that's the only reason that Fred was even found. And I mean, it is so cool. And he was an unbelievable player that and he was great, you know, was underrated in every way. But Absolutely. Um, so awesome. are, are you like you said, you've sort of known this was going to be your way for a month. Are you you good with it? I mean, how, where's your headspace at right now? Yeah, I, I'm good with it. I think. You know, it was disappointing this year to hurt my hip right away. Yeah. Um, but after, you know, I kind of got over that and realized that it was going to be a little more serious than I had initially thought. Um, it kind of gave me some time to look at life after football. And, uh, you know, Washington had the crazy thing this year where the facility got raided by the DEA. And so after that happened, like after that happened, the guy that I was doing all my rehab with was gone and the number two was gone. So I decided to go elsewhere. Um, so I truly was not going in the building. I was rehabbing for an hour or two at a separate facility. And it, it was kind of like an early retirement, uh, just trying to figure out how I fit back into my family during the fall, because that hadn't happened for the last 16 years. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good with it. Um, you know, we'll see what's to come. I got to try to keep busy somehow and not drive my wife and kids too crazy. Well, I, I, one of the things I think is the most Ryan Fitzpatrick thing ever is that you began your career with a team that no longer exists, the St. Louis Rams, <laughs> and you end your career with a team that doesn't go by that name anymore. <laughs> so yeah. you went into the league where a team that doesn't exist anymore and you left with a team that doesn't have that name anymore in the Washington football team. I, I think that, that kind of I sums it up, agree. right? I think that kind yeah. of sums it up. That's incredible. That's incredible. And I've been answering for the last however many months, everybody's asking me, oh, how do you like the commanders? What do you think about it? And I'm like, I'm not on the team anymore. I played yeah. for the Washington football team. I don't know. Yeah. If someone asked you, okay, if you could describe Ryan Fitzpatrick's career, what would you say? 
Uh, I mean, I, I definitely, you know, I was a journeyman. I was a nomad. Uh, but I mean, I had so much fun. I, I think the last two days have been awesome for me in that the amount of former teach, uh, coaches and teammates that have reached out to me. And some of it's funny because I'm not on social media. So it is text messages, but it's, I can't find his number. Oh, I've got an email. I'm getting emails as if, you know, we're 20 years back, um, phone calls. It's just been so fun to hear from everybody. And the fact that, um, I made an impact on so many people's lives, not just on the football field, um, but just as human beings. I, I think that to me is my favorite part about my career. And it's really showed up the last two days and some of the nice messages that I've received. Well, you know, I, I think that if I was going to use one word to describe your career, I would say you're relatable to a lot of people, right? Like, the, some of the things, your antics, you you and Eric Decker and Mangle took the New Jersey mass transit to a Rangers playoff game. You know, you you show up in Deshaun Jackson's clothes after one performance. Uh, you know, yeah. you were in the stands in Buffalo shirtless uh, when technically you were still a member of the commanders, uh, the Washington football team for that football playoff game, that the point, football yeah. team at that point. I mean, I think people found you very relatable. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. And I think I've always just tried to be real. I've tried to be authentic. I've tried to be myself. Yeah. And that for a lot of people that works for a lot of my teammates sitting at the lunch table and just having conversations and talking and getting to know them uh, and including them in on my life. All those things, I think you're right. And the relatability, it's the authenticity uh, guys, you know, one thing I try to tell my kids is it's very easy, especially in team sports, especially in a locker room for football, like people see through the bullshit. Yeah. They, they see through the bullshit. So, I mean, if you're not being authentic and real and who you are, then they're going to see that. So be yourself, enjoy being yourself and hopefully people like and respond to that. No, I, I, it's such an important thing because I remember when Justin Herbert was going through the draft process. Well, he's an introvert and he's not really this. So I'm like, wait a minute. So now you wanted to pretend like he's not an introvert and that's going to make him more likable and more of a leader? Like, that's stupid. That's just stupid. Yeah, I will say too, I met I met him at the Masters maybe two years ago. Uh, yeah, probably two years ago. I sh he is massive. Yeah, he's a big dude. Massive. Yeah. I shook his hand, but he did seem so young, but... Like he's an incredible player and he is his hands, like his arms. He was, you know, looking down on me. I was like, gee, I mean, this dude was put on earth to play football yeah, and, uh, and play quarterback. And it, it's been fun to see his career so far. I mean, you know, I, I wrote something about you for Facebook and, and I, I use the word relatable, but I also like you had, you had maybe the most unique career I can remember. Like, you, not Brett Favre, not Tom Brady, not Peyton Manning, not Aaron Rodgers. You were the first quarterback in NFL history to throw for at least 400 yards in three straight games. Like, how does that happen? <laughs> well, and, and if you remember that circumstance, that was when Jameis yeah. got suspended for three games. Correct. So that was, it's like, if you just trace my career arc and you trace you know, some of it, I was signed to be a starter or a bridge and that kind of happened towards the tail end of my career. Uh, but a lot of the places I started as a backup and there was some crazy circumstance of why, you know, the starter got hurt. Gino breaks his jaw. Uh, there's a million different things that were happening that like, it just kept happening. Yeah. And I will tell you this, and I, I haven't really said this to anybody. I didn't want to sign with the bills as a backup because I love Josh Allen yeah. and I love watching Josh Allen play football. Yeah. And if I signed to be a backup with the Buffalo Bills, what's happened the rest of my career? I end up on the field. I don't want to play on the field. Yeah. I want, I want to see Josh Allen play. Yeah. And so that was, that was one where it was like, no, I, I love watching this kid too much. And I've, I've seen this story happen over and over and over again. So we don't need to see it happen. You don't want him to get Fitzpatrick. Is that what you're saying? 
exactly. We can point it and say, now that I'm done playing, yeah. we can put it out there. Yeah. Like, my God, everywhere I went. And it was weird injuries, too. So uh, nine stops. Is there one that was your favorite? I mean, I spent the longest in Buffalo. Right. I was there for four years. I think Buffalo, when I think about cities, when I think about fan bases, Buffalo is number one by a mile. Yeah. It, it was it was so great for me and my family and the people that we met there. And even now, more so than anywhere I played, when I'm in the airport, if I see, you know, flight to Rochester, flight to Buffalo, I just, those are my people. Yeah. We just get each other, yeah. you know, and, and I love it. I, I will say too, though, so many, so many great places, so many great cities, so many great people. Um, my, my years in Miami, my years in Tampa, I just had so much fun with my teammates and so much fun playing football. Um, that those are also on the tops of my list. Yeah. Uh, listen, you're not the only one that said that. Like I, I, you know, I had Takeo Spikes on the pod earlier this year and I said, of all the places you played before I even finished, he said, Buffalo, he, he said, but like it yeah. was by far his favorite place. Kind of ironic, coincidental. I don't know how the, the strict definition of the word, maybe you and your Harvard education can tell me which one it is. Then it was the game against Buffalo when a member of the Jets where that win would have gotten you into the playoffs where you never got, and they were the ones that stopped you, yeah. right? Yeah, it, it's it's just like a yeah, a crazy harsh irony, I guess. Um, you know, that year we were we had won five in a row. We were ten and five. Just beat New England in over. I mean, we beat the Giants two weeks before. Then we beat New England when Matthew Slater they decided to kick off during overtime. Um, yeah. And, and then that, I mean, that game, I mean, I, I just remember, you know, the moment I had with Brandon Marshall, who never went to the playoffs in the locker room after that game in the tiny Buffalo locker room. Um, you know, one of the, one of the hardest moments of my career, but also one of those that I'll always kind of remember um, just in terms of having, strong emotion tied to certain things. I mean, that that's a tough, but also a fond memory for me of, you know, the people that were in that locker room with me and the support that I had and, you know, just the, the crazy career that I, that I played. Yeah. I mean, obviously missing in the four fourth quarter interceptions, probably the low point. Is there one point or one play or one specific game that you remember more than anything? Cause I've got a couple in my mind that I like sum it up from but, like, I want to know what if you have one just in my career yeah, you're yeah. asking. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I actually wrote, I wrote a bunch down. I, you know, I wrote down my 11 like favorite games uh, as I was just thinking the last few days about some stuff and it's, it's too many to bore you with, but I mean, more recently the, uh, the face mask game. Absolutely. You know, I came off the bench. Absolutely. I mean, what a, what a cool moment. Um, you know, and that, that one for me, like, again, that just summed up my career, which was, okay, we need to play. Let's put this guy in. I came in, you know, we came, we came back. We were under the most improbable circumstances with 19 seconds left and trying to get a field goal. And, I thought that was impossible and we did it until Patrick Mahomes did it in like 13 exactly. seconds. <laughs> you know. um, but, you know, we didn't have any timeouts and it, it just, it, and then again, it true to, you know, my career, I get COVID yeah. two days oh. later, I have COVID and I can't play in the next game. Which and again, it, could have gotten you into the postseason again against Buffalo. Again against Buffalo, yeah. and that year, both years, we went ten and six and didn't make the playoffs. And it just is absolutely crazy. But that's that's one of them. You know, the start in twenty eighteen when Jameis was suspended, those three games, and specifically that first game versus New Orleans at New Orleans, it was everything went perfect in that game. Everything. And it was just this feeling of invincibility. And then after the game, just the the feeling I had when I called my wife, just 
so fun to share that moment with her and with all my biggest supporters and family because we had been through so much. And the one thing I learned throughout my career is, you know, we always are as players and probably you in what you do as well. Like when you don't have a good performance or you lose a game, that hurts a lot more than when you win yep. a game or have a good performance. The, the bad always outweighs the good. And so what I learned and what I, in, you know, the second half of my career and hopefully what you could see as well is when I had those great moments and those great games, I made sure that it was important to not move on to the next one so quickly, but enjoy yeah. it. And, you know, we work so hard and we're so hard on ourselves in the bad moments that when I do get these wonderful, fantastic moments that they're celebrated and they're celebrated with everybody around me because so much goes into that and those moments are earned. And so that the start of that season, but that, that New Orleans game in particular was, was one of those moments where it just, it was, it was so phenomenal. And there are so many emotions tied into my head uh, from calling my wife after that. Well, the other one that I'll remember is week 17, 2019, because of the ramifications that that had. You guys at the Dolphins went into Foxborough and somehow take down the Patriots on a game winning drive late in that game. And the ramifications that that, that game had, because it knocked the Patriots out of the two seed, they go down to the wild card. Kansas City gets a two seed. Then Tennessee goes into New England, ends Tom Brady's New England career with a pick six. Kansas City then gets home field advantage, and they go on to win the Super Bowl. So I feel like the Chiefs owe you a ring. I got – they sent me some steaks that year. I don't know. I think it was maybe a steakhouse that sent me steaks, or maybe it was Andy Reid. I don't know. It would have been a cheeseburger um, if it came from Andy. Let's be honest. It wouldn't have been a steak. <laughs> Well, I would take I would take a Hawaiian shirt from yeah. Andy. I love his. Yeah, he's style. got a few. I think we're different sizes. Yeah, you might. I, I love there might be style. some tailoring that needs to be done. Um, so, how long <laughs> the the beard was your go to? I mean, you look like you're you know in the Game of Thrones sequel or prequel right now that you're getting ready for. How long is the beard and the hair going to stay? Uh, this is like the hair needs to go. It happens every off season. If summer comes, I don't cut my hair because I don't have to. And it just, my hair just grows this yeah. way. <laughs> um, the beard's always going to be there. I mean, I'm it's trying. It's not as, I, I don't have as, I can't do it like no, you. You look, you look phenomenal. And I will tell you the combination of the tan that you have going on right now with the white yeah. beard, the contrast is I'm popping a lot of lenses for sure. But yeah, I, I'm due for a haircut. I'm well, listen, let me just say as someone who appreciate it because it's not always going to be that thick. And if it is, you have the greatest hair DNA of all time because uh, it, it's, yeah, it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty solid. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, well, listen, I don't want to I don't want to spoil any trade secrets. But when you say you're not on social media, I remember one time you said, I'm not on social media but I'm on social media. You told me that once. I, I mean, I see it. I, I, I see it all. I mean, the best is even take the last two days, for instance, you know, Fred Jackson puts out whatever tweet he puts out. I've got at least 20 people on my contact list that think it's very important to send me a text of the screenshot yeah. that Fred yeah. tweeted out. So, you know, I, I get it the first time and it's great. It's great. But um, yeah, I get it 20 times over and over and over again. But yeah, especially when you're playing, like you see and hear everything. And I, I do think it's important too. You have to have the vibe of and the feeling of what's going on in and around you. Um, but I have my one guy, Marcus Chapel from Buffalo, New York. He essentially fills me in on everything. He's your go-to he, guy? He is my eyes and right. ears. He's my all right, go-to. So listen, you got a million other things to do and you got all the time to do it. And whatever you're doing next, I, I wish you nothing but success. And I think you're going to be great at whatever you do. What advice would Ryan Fitzpatrick today give 2007 Ryan Fitzpatrick when he finally heard his name called in the seventh round of the, of the draft picked by the Rams? I would say um, 
after that seventh kid, make sure to put a hard press on your wife for kid number eight, because I failed on the hard press. I think we're done at seven. Seven's so not that's, enough. That's, probably, that's a touchdown. You wanted the two point conversion. It's a rainbow. It's a touchdown. It's perfect. But think about, I mean, we could call my wife Octo mom, you know? <laughs> oh, I'm if sure she'd love one. that. So, I, I, Trying to find all the, all the different See, angles. I always get this from you. The last time we had this conversation, you also brought up your mating habits with your wife. So, uh, you know, at least you're consistent. Uh, I'll, I'll give you that. You are consistent on yeah, that front. It, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about talking about you know the the issues I'm having, but uh, yeah, I, I just trust well, you that much. I, you listen, know? I love to confide. It means it like to quote. A great football philosopher. This means something to me. This means something to me. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm looking at, Google Houston Texans pregame speech. Ryan Fitzpatrick, you'll figure it out. Listen, my friend, thank you for doing this. I appreciate you. Whatever you do next, you're going to kill it and knock it out of the park. But uh, don't ever shave the beard. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Trey. Once again, thanks to uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. He signed my son's jersey once with the greatest line of all time. He said it wouldn't be magic if it happened all the time. Ryan Fitzpatrick always knew who he was, and he was true to his core, and that's why so many teammates loved him to death. So I hope you enjoyed this little bonus episode of Half Forgotten History. Again, as we said on the last show, we're taking a break for a couple of weeks, but we've already got great guests lined up for Season 8, a lot of Hall of Famers, and some current players that might surprise you. That's all coming in Season 8, which we'll be debuting in just a couple of weeks. Until then, mahalo. Mahalo.